So I'm alive and in new digs. Today's topic is going to be expanding on what is becoming a series at this point where I take older 5.5 inch color screen printers like the Anycubic Photon or the LEGU Mars and breathe new life into them with monoscreens. Today's topic being what a lot of folks have been talking about. That is the 5.5 inch full HD monoscreen from Chidu. So I've been playing on and off with the screen for a couple months now, kind of, you know, pseudo beta testing and giving feedback and kind of playing around with it with all the different um, popular 5.5 inch printers like the Photon and the Mars, et cetera, et cetera, and trying to get an idea for, um, you know, how it works, how easy is it to install and put in, et cetera, et cetera. So this video is going to be an installation guide, but that's really not much to do. It's for the most part, a drop-in replacement, you know, very little uh, compared to my prior upgrade videos that I've done. So part of, you know, the discussion in this video is talking about um, things you got to kind of keep an eye out for in terms of compatibility issues and, um, you know, wherever you need to use an adapter versus a firmware update versus, you know, having to do a full board change that can get confusing really quickly because there's so many different uh, flavors of Chidu board and versions floating around. So bear with me. Hopefully uh, you'll get some good value out of this video and Let's get to it. My name's Yasu. I'm your go-to guy for all things when it comes to resin printing, resins, and well, 3D pre in general. If you're not subscribed, you're a first timer and you're into resin printing, well, I'm your guy. You should totally consider hitting that like and subscribe button. So you might be asking, what printers work best for a screen? The short answer is any resin printer that had a 5.5 inch RGB color screen inserted into it. Um, they are the identical size dimensions and depending on which variant you get, the protective glass thickness is even the same, which is good because it effectively makes this upgrade a painless, easy drop-in replacement. So the longer answer to the compatibility question is it depends because there's a couple different things you got to take into account depending on your 3D printer. Certain printers like the Ellie Mars and the Anycubic Photon actually used an older generation RGB 5.5 inch screen that used a completely different connector, even though it looks exactly the same, but is identified by its part number. That is, uh, it's long string of layers and numbers that starts with LX and ends with SX03. I'll flash that up on the screen. Whereas the newer uh, RGB uh, 3D printers, such as the Ellie Gumars Pro, the Photon S, and a couple other brands use the newer LX, bunch of layers and numbers put up here, uh, ending in SX04. And this has been a source of constant confusion for a lot of people because they have very similar looking uh, plugs, but completely different pinouts. That is the, how they're wired um, is completely different. So if you insert it in the wrong screen to the wrong board, you actually ended up um, usually killing some part of your board. Usually the, uh, I believe the voltage pump that regulated the power from the capacitors um, to the rest of the main board that allowed the, uh, the screen to activate and deactivate. You brick that, you bricked your board essentially, unless you replace that one little tiny chip, which not a whole lot of people could do because they lacked, um, you know, electronics repair tools like a hot air station and, um, you know, et cetera, et cetera. The key takeaway here is the 5.5 inch uh, mono screens from Chidu uses the SX04 pinouts. So that means you need an adapter in order to connect it to your um, Elegoo Mars, you know, not the Pro, just the Elegoo Mars, and the, um, the Anycubic Photon, the OG version, not necessarily the S or AVOs. Now the adapter does come with the uh, kits that are marked specifically for the Elegoo Mars or Anycubic Photon. That's one of the key differences between that and the version that's marked for the Pro. There's actually two different versions. The other key difference between them is the screen glass on the Ellie Gumar's Pro version is a tad thicker. I'm, if I remember my measurements correctly, it was around an extra half a millimeter to a millimeter thicker than the glass supplied for the Ellie Gumar's slash photon version. Outside of that, if your printer has a Chidu board 
installed in it, whether it's an older version one or the newest version three, your printer will work with the screen pretty much out of the box with a firmware change. I actually have a link to all those different firmwares on the Chew website in the description down below. Now, if you're looking to upgrade a printer that has a non chew board, you know, some sort of proprietary board such as the ones that are installed on the Photon S or one, another brand or make that isn't necessarily one of the popular three, it's still doable to upgrade. It just takes the extra step of also having to change out the main board. This will vary in difficulty, ranging from super easy with, say, the Photon S that has the pinouts and down to the connectors being uh, exactly identical. You just have to match like with like, you know, motor to motor, end stop to end stop, etc., etc., and obviously uh, flash the firmware to ensure that the um, your motor goes up and down in the correct direction, homes, etc., etc. Relatively simple stuff that you can do with the configuration file that Chidu um, basically supplies uh, that can be uh, flashed to the board. Now, the other big question that a lot of people ask me after folks saw me do my six inch mono modification was, do I need to change the light source? A lot of people saw that and, you know, understandably got completely intimidated by the complexity of that change as well as the cost of it. And the long and short answer is no, you do not need to change the light source. You can actually get extremely good, like, to me, I'm, from all the testing I did, floored by the results and the level of detail and sharpness you can get out of prints with, you know, the standard stock COB and reflector rays. And on top of that, you can get some pretty respectable cure times. On average, the, COB, the stock COB on my AnyCubic Photon was about maybe 15 to 20% slower than a comparable mono printer such as the uh, Anycubic Mono or the um, 002, the Creality 002H or even the Eligu Mars Pro 2. You know, just a tad slower, but still in that same ballpark of getting relatively lightning fast cure times. But that being said, not quite as fast as the one second cure times I was able to easily squeeze out of um, any Cubic Photon Mono Mod. I gotta come up with a better name. I should just pick one of the ones that were suggested in the last video. But I digress. Hello, I'm interrupting my own video from the editing desk so I can uh, point out something that I completely forgot, numpty that I am. Um, that's something that should be blatantly obvious, but this modification, like most printer modifications, will likely void your warranty. So, so keep in mind you're doing this at your own risk. So how does one go about doing this mod? I'm glad you asked. First steps is obviously you gotta take out the old screen. Uh, to do this, you know, you're gonna need to use a hairdryer or a heat gun to uh, gently heat up the edges of the, uh, the screen to um, soften the glue that's holding it down. Now be careful not to heat it up too much because you will scorch the screen, which is a non-issue because it's probably a bad screen or you're getting rid of it anyways. But the bigger concern is the layer of under glass or under acrylic, as I'm hearing that's shipping with some of the DE um, Anycubic Photons, can break or melt if there's a huge change in temperature. So carefully pry that screen off, discard it, do whatever you want with it. The next step is you gotta open up the case. So in the case of the Anycubic Photon, there's a couple screws you got to loosen on the top plate as well as in the case itself. That should allow you to pop the undercase open, giving you access to the control board. Now you should be able to follow the ribbon cable that terminates at the screen back to the board and find where it's connected. Pop that off carefully because the connectors are actually pretty easy to damage. I've, believe me, I've learned it the hard way more than a few times. <laughs> From there, you'll notice if you look very closely at the connector, on each corner, there's a, a number. This refers to basically the pin numbers, but it allows you to align and match up with the pin numbers that are listed on the ribbon cable of the screen that you're installing. Make sure they match up. If they are backwards or wrong, you're gonna likely uh, blow the board as well as damage the screen. 
double check your work before you power it on and you know try to run that screen. If you're only going to change the screen and use the same stock board on your AnyCubic Photon or Eligoo Mars, you're going to want to make sure you use the adapter in this step. Don't plug it in directly. Otherwise, once again, you're going to blow out the voltage pump on your, um, your board and have a very bad day. Now, on the other hand, if you're going to install this on an Eligu Mars Pro, emphasis on the Pro or um, the Creality 002R, you can just get by with plugging it direct. Do not use the adapter because once again, if you use the adapter on those boards, you will blow the, you know, the voltage pump. Personally, I ended up opting to change my main board to a Chidu board V3, which has an identical pinout, everything, you know, same size, so everything fit in perfectly because I was adult and I burnt out, you can guess it, my voltage pump. Um, so I figured, high time, I might as well upgrade. Now keep in mind, you're not gonna see much of a change in performance if you change from the stock board to the Chidu board V3. So if you have a perfectly good stock board, you may as well install the screen and use the stock board and, you know, keep it simple. Once you have the screen connected to the main board, it's a simple matter of reversing all the steps, buttoning it all up, and then either using the included uh, double-sided adhesive to tack it down the same way that the stock screens are, or as I prefer to for easy changes and fixings when needed, using Kapton tape or a black electrical tape to tack it down from above. The slight height variation uh, to my experimentation has not changed uh, or affected the performance or prints that come off my machine. Now the next step, whether you are using the same stock board or you collected the upgrade to the new V3 is the same. That is flashing the screen specific firmware to make sure the board knows what screen it's working with and can display the, well, the right outputs. To do this, you're gonna to wanna to download link in the description below from the Chidu website, the uh, firmware for this particular screen. It's clearly marked 5.5 inch mono screen, the yada, yada, yada. Um, click on which uh, board you're using. I believe it's slightly, the firmware is slightly different, whether it's a stock AnyCubic Photon board versus the boards on the Eligu Mars. Make sure you have the right one. Download it, save it to your a flash drive, you know, could be the one that you store your files on. Stick said flash drive into your printer. Go into the print uh, interface where you, you know, go to file selection, find that uh, driver file, and then click print and pretend you're printing it. And when in reality, it's loading up uh, the new firmware. It will make it, you know, a long beep as if it finished the print afterwards, if you have sound enabled, and you're good to go. Now at this juncture, you're probably gonna to want to make sure your slicer is updated with the new uh, screen resolution settings. Otherwise, uh, when you go to print something, it's gonna probably throw up an error telling you that the resolutions are mismatched. So I have a Chidu Profile 40 AnyCubic Photon in the link in the description below. And it's a link to a GitHub, you know, simply put into your Chidu box and you're golden. Alternately, I'm gonna flash up uh, the major resolution settings you need to change in your slicer in case you're using not Chudu Box, you know, Likey or one of the other um, slicers. And voila, you've officially breathed new life into that old RGB printer that was collecting dust. Now, a common discussion point I've noticed coming up uh, frequently when this screen is discussed is the question of what is the resolution like? That is, what is the XY pixel size like um, in comparison to other screens in you know, the size and uh, price range? So according to the data sheet, the pixel size for the 5.5 inch mono screens from Chidu is 63 microns. For comparison's sake, the, um, the 2K screens that ship with most RGB uh, printers is 48 microns, and the screens that are shipping with the newer generation, you know, 6.8 uh, inch screens that you find on the Photon Mono, the Creality LDH, uh, and the Eligu Mars Pro is 50 microns.
Exactly. A resolution haircut of 15 microns isn't actually that bad when you consider how small 15 microns is. You know, remember, for comparison's sake, a human hair on average is about 100 microns thick. So you're talking about a difference of a tenth of a human hair. I don't know about you, but I'm not sure if I can see a difference in uh, resolution without some serious optics. So we're at the point where I'm gonna show you a little montage of two different prints. That is, on some, some of them, I'm gonna randomize and mix them up. Uh, some of them are off of the new mono screen, and some of them are done with other either 50 micron or 48 micron resolution screens. And let's see if you can spot the difference. Now keep in mind, the screen isn't the only thing that will have a major impact on the quality and detail of your prints. Other things like your resin that you use, the layer uh, cure times that you apply, because if you over cure or under cure, you're going to lose detail, etc, etc. So there's a lot of other factors you have to take into account. I've kind of isolated for those factors by making sure I use resins that I know um, and have specifically tuned the resins that I use to maximize and you know, get the crispest, crispest detail possible. So your results will vary depending on your settings and resins that you use. Hello again, Editing Yasu here. I just wanted to slide in some additional commentary about what I think of this mod in general because 3A me was too tired to um, articulate the finer points. And in general, I actually really like this modification. It's simple, it's cheap at give or take 40 to $100, depending on which direction you go with an extra board or not. Um, it's basically a glorified screen replacement with a firmware upgrade on top of it. And yeah, not really much in a sacrifice apart from losing about what, uh, 13 to 15 um, microns. I mean, that's negligible. Fractions of a human hair, as I probably pointed out in the video. So honestly, it's a good mod. 
Um, if you do not want to go through the, the headache and uh, drama of you know doing a full out gut and rebuild of your printer, this is the way to breathe new life into your existing printer. Now, the calculus of whether it's better to buy a brand new mono or you know breathe new life into your current one, that's going to vary, and that's really up to you and what you're planning to use with it. But personally, I try to reuse everything I can. Like I have um, five and six year old uh, FDM printers that I'm constantly upgrading and doing things to try to keep them relevant and well current. Um, so food for thought, and. Uh, if you want to support this channel, I also have some affiliate links to AliExpress and Chidu. So if you want to buy uh, a 5.5 inch mono screen, um, you can support the channel by buying through my affiliate links. Link in the description below. Anyways, back to your regularly scheduled video. All right, so I think that hits most of the critical points, you know, covering installation, compatibility, uh, the elephant in the room that is resolution, et cetera, et cetera. And I hope this video was useful in helping you figure out wherever you want to uh, apply this upgrade or go to the next level and, you know, put in a six inch um, mono screen. Um, either way, let me know if you got any questions because who knows, I might have missed something completely obvious and I'm always open to creating a follow-up video. Anyways, if you like this video, feel free to hit that like button. Helps me uh, boost up in the YouTube algorithm. Uh, if you wanna see more resin content, well, you should totally hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell. Anyways, that's me, Yasu signing out. See you in the next video.